When I lived in Egypt about 10 years ago, way before I even knew how to cook, there was this one drink that Salma and I would have every day during summer. We were obsessed with it. And that was before we even realized it had super hydrating powers that help you deal with the summer heat. And a few weeks back, it actually got really hot here in London. And all I could think about was making this drink. Today, I'll show you the recipe. Then I'll show you how you can turn it into the most incredible slushies and sorbet. So let me explain what it is and why it's such an effective summer drink. To a blender, you add some peeled lemons, mint, plenty of sugar, as well as water, and then blend it into a smooth juice. The recipe and amounts differ slightly in every house, but as long as you've got lemons, mint, and sugar, you'll end up with what we call lemon mint juice. As to why it's refreshing, first there's the cooling effect of the mint. As you know, mint contains the chemical compound menthol, which triggers cold sensitive receptors in your mouth and skin. Think about how after brushing your teeth or eating mint, every breath feels cooler and more refreshing for a few hours. The mint gives the juice a similar cooling effect, which makes breathing in hot summer air a lot more tolerable. And as for the citrus, acidic foods encourage saliva production. Breathing in hot summer air literally dries out your mouth and can leave you feeling parched, so extra saliva prevents that horrible dry throat feeling. Try biting a lime and you'll notice that your mouth stays moist for a few hours. And then the sugar, well, apart from sweetening the drink, it gives you a big boost of energy that you definitely need on hot days. For the lemon mint juice, you'll need some citrus. You can use regular lemons or limes interchangeably, though I prefer it with limes. In Egypt, we use these small yellow ones which are tiny compared to lemons, but they pack a strong punch and have a sweeter, longer lasting sourness than limes. You can juice the citrus, but we usually peel off the skin and blend them whole. Or if we're using these small limes, we sometimes blend them with the skin on. And the reason you don't want to do that if you're using regular lemons or limes is because the skin is a lot thicker, and this white layer of pith under the skin is disgustingly bitter. That will ruin your drink if you don't get rid of it. But on the tiny limes, it's a lot thinner, so it's less of a problem. So you need about three and a half lemons or five limes or about 12 of the tiny ones. And then for the mint, you need about a packed quarter cup or 10 grams of mint leaves. You obviously don't need this massive pile, just a few stalks will do. And you need to strip the leaves from the stalks. I find mint's flavor and strength differs massively from plant to plant, so you might need to play with the amount. On a side note, if you find a type of mint you like, you can grow infinite mint out of thin air. I'm predicting you'll love this recipe, so you might save some money by doing this. Just count three rows of leaves down from the top of a sprig and cut underneath the node where the leaves are sprouting from. Then remove the last row of leaves. Put the stem into a cup with some water in a sunny place and in a week or so the mint should sprout loads of roots like these have. And then you just plant them in some soil. That's how I grew this massive mint plant in five weeks. Back to the blender where you add your citrus. Here I'm using two peeled lemons and two limes. Then I added a packed quarter cup or 10 grams of mint and then 100 grams of sugar. In goes three cups or 700 milliliters of water and then blend it. Let everything combine at lower speed and then whack it up to high for 30 seconds to really break down that mint. When the time is up, it should be foamy and intensely green. The juice will also start to split pretty much immediately. This is when you want to taste your juice and adjust it. So if you need more mint, add some, but on my end, I felt like it needed more sugar. So I added another 30 grams of sugar and also added 150 grams of ice to cool it down. Then I blended it until it was smooth again. And now it tastes perfect. This yields four glasses or six with ice of intensely lemony minty juice. I poured it through a fine strainer which removes any pieces of mint or any bits of lemon and then poured myself a nice glass. Some people would call this a lemonade, but I don't think that respects how good and refreshing this is. You can bottle it up and keep it in the fridge for up to two days and all you need to do is shake it before serving. Time to give this a quick taste. Mmm. Oh, that is too good. I've missed you. It's been pretty hot recently. Maple isn't enjoying it. Let's go surprise Salma with some of this stuff. Hello, I need your reaction. Okay. Try it. Uh, How's it? Ooh. It's good, right? It's really good. Just what I needed. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Very cooling, very refreshing. You can really taste the mint. Now I just want a really icy version, but well done. It's really good. Selma said this could do with more ice, which is an interesting challenge. And to do that, we can make a lemon mint slushy. But first, a tip. If you want to give the juice a smoother flavor and creamier texture, or you want to use your citrus fruit without peeling them, use some milk in place of water. In this batch, I added some limes with their peel and a bunch without, with the mint and sugar. Then I added two and a half cups of water and half a cup of whole milk. After blending it together and straining it, it clearly has a lighter color and creamier appearance. Yes, you can taste a bit of bitterness from the lime skin, but the milk does make it a bit smoother. I'd still recommend you peel them anyway, but the milk is a nice addition. 
As for the slushy version, we're going to need the flavour to be twice as strong. The colder something is, the less flavourful and sweet it tastes, so we need to concentrate it. I'm going to start by adding 20 grams or a packed half a cup of mint leaves. The sweetness also needs to go up, so in goes 250 grams of sugar. Instead of adding in peeled lemons or limes, I've juiced them and then strained out any bits so I have 300 milliliters of lemon and lime juice. I blended everything together for about 30 seconds on high speed and we now have lemon and mint concentrate. You could pour a small amount into a glass and add carbonated water to make a fizzy version or use it in some sort of cocktail, but instead of that I added 700 grams of ice. Blending this together will result in a slushy, but the ice will quickly separate from the juice without a binder. So to bind the ice and juice together, we'll add a special ingredient called xanthan gum. This is the same stuff that places like Starbucks use to thicken their frappuccinos, and we only need an eighth of a teaspoon. Once that's added, we just blend everything together really, really well. The ice will break down and the xanthan gum will thicken the mixture, and the end result will be a beautifully thick lemon mint frappe. I couldn't find a straw to drink this with, but eating it with a spoon works just as well. Just imagine sipping on this in 40 degree heat. It is peak refreshment. Mm. That is just too good. I wish I had a straw. This is the perfect consistency to drink. If you've ever wondered how Arabs stay cool in the summer, this drink is key. No exaggeration, this is the best thing I've drank all year long. And if you want it to last a little bit longer, turn it into a sorbet. I got a Ninja Creamy a while back, so I just poured the rest of the mixture into one of the tubs, knocked out the air, and then froze it for 24 hours. Once it was frozen solid, I let the Ninja Creamy blend it using the sorbet setting, which gave me an incredible tasting sorbet. I put it back though and hit the respin button, and this time the result was more like a lemon mint ice cream. This stuff is incredible. Time to try out this sorbet. This might be one of the best sorbets you can ever make. I'm not certain whether you'll like this more as a juice, a slushy, or a sorbet, but what I am certain of is you're going to be making a lot of this for the rest of your life. Mm.